Hey everyone, Christian here and in this video I want to show you my new monitoring solution with Prometheus and Grafana that I've recently deployed on my home server. You can monitor several different systems and components with that like showing CPU, memory, disk or network utilization, create an excellent dashboard you can fully customize to your needs and collect all your server or application metrics as well. It's incredible. And I'm going to show you how to set up this, but first if you're managing some servers in your home lab or production environments and you want to authenticate to them securely, then take a look at the sponsor of this video, Teleport. Teleport is an open source access proxy to securely manage SSH sessions, web applications, databases and even Kubernetes clusters. And every login is protected with the two-factor authentication and an audit logging to record users' sessions and log users' actions. You can install the free community edition completely self-hosted at no cost. Cost. So download and try it out. And suppose you want to use Teleport within your business environment. In that case, they also offer an enterprise version with 24-7 support or Active Directory integration and much more features. So just reach out to the Teleport team. So if you are like me and you're hosting a lot of stuff in your own home lab or maybe you have some production servers running somewhere and you want to monitor them, you know that this is often a big challenge because when you have many different applications, services and components you want to monitor, you often need to log into multiple different web UIs where you need to switch around the other systems. And having a centralized monitoring system is so much better. Because you can quickly identify the health of all of your systems and servers and get notified when certain thresholds are reached or track any errors. And you have everything accessible in one single UI that you can fully customize and you get the overall visibility of the entire environment. And that's important for every sys or cloud admin and even in your home lab because how should you know when something is going wrong if you're not monitoring it? So that's really what server monitoring is all about, knowing what's going on and identify bottlenecks and resources. It's also important to understand that we have two different monitoring techniques because we differentiate between logs and metrics. And logs come in various forms. On a Linux server, for example, you will find many records, primarily located in the var log directory. Applications will write their events and output to log files there. For example, when you are running a web server and someone sends a new web request to it, the application will write a new entry in a log file with the IP address, the URL and so on. So logs are tracking events with uh, specific details about the nature and type of it. So if something suspicious happens on your system, it's always a good idea to take a look at the log file to recap what was happening in that particular time. Metrics are a bit different and they also come in different variations. So one metric, for example, is a counter. So every time someone sends a new web request, we would increase a counter for that. And then we can calculate, for example, how many web requests we get in a specific time frame. So metrics are more about uh, thresholds numbers and statistics such as CPU and memory utilization or a counter for the disk read and write operations. For example, if you see a low performance within your server's hard disk, you might just take a look at the metrics and see if it gets too many requests in a short time and you might need to upgrade your hard drive because you've reached a bottleneck there. Without metrics, so how should you know that? As I said in the beginning, you probably don't want to do that all manually for every single application or every server you're running. Having a centralized server where you're collecting and aggregating all this information, this is exactly what we're going to do with Prometheus. So Prometheus is an open source monitoring system that stores all these metrics in a giant database. And you can use it to scrape different systems and collect server or application metrics. But let's take a closer look at its architecture and how the system really works. First, we need to deploy the Prometheus server, which pulls the metrics from different targets. So you're configuring all systems and services you want to collect metrics from inside the Prometheus configuration file. And then Prometheus will initiate the connection to all configured targets and scrape the metrics in a specific interval. And these targets are not necessarily physical or virtual servers, because you might want to collect different metrics for different applications running on the same server. So therefore, a target can represent a physical device, a virtual server, server like a Linux machine for example, or also just Docker daemons, Kubernetes clusters and much more. Prometheus offers a simple interface to query and read this data, but it's mainly there for collecting and storing it, not visualizing it. So therefore we're also going to deploy another application that is called Grafana. And Grafana is a web UI that queries the metrics from our Prometheus server using a specific query language that is called the PromQL. And you can then log into the Grafana UI and visualize the information in a friendly 
the dashboard. It's also interesting that Prometheus has an alert system with their own alert manager, which can send you notifications in case of a specific event. But that's probably a topic for another video, because I don't want to make it too complicated in this one. But don't worry, I will make more videos about server monitoring and also server logging in the future. Okay, so that's enough for the presentation, I think. So let's get to work and let's deploy this stuff in our home lab server. So you can go and install that directly on a Linux operating system or somewhere else. But of course, I'm also installing that with Docker and Portana that I basically just use in <laughs> most of my videos. So if you haven't watched videos about containerization with Docker and Portana web UI, then you should definitely check that out on my YouTube channel. I will put your link to the right playlist in the description down below. And in the Portana web UI, you can simply just start deploying Prometheus and Grafana and some of the other exporters that we need to collect the metrics later here. And you could just go to the official documentation, just uh, go and find their Docker instructions here. But of course, I already created some nice templates for you guys so that you don't need to do that yourself. So you can just go to my personal GitHub page, you will also find in the description. And here I usually share some templates, dot files and other resources with you and our community. And you can just go to my repository that is called Boilerplates. So in this repository, I usually share templates and configuration deployments for various projects here, such as Ansible playbooks, Docker Compose, Kubernetes, and Vagrant files, and those kind of things. And in the Docker Compose stack, you will find a bunch of different applications and templates for it, such as Prometheus and Grafana. So here you can just go and clone this repository or copy this to your server and use Docker Compose to deploy it. Or you simply can just open the Docker Compose file and copy the content and go to your Portana web UI where you can deploy a new stack. So just select your Portana server here, go to stacks and add a new stack here and call it something like mon monitoring. Now we need to paste the content of the Docker Compose file in here, but I also want to show you step by step what we're actually doing here. So first of all, we will set the version here to version 3 and define two volumes here to store the data because Prometheus and Grafana both need volumes and persistent data. Grafana needs to store some configuration files and some of the dashboard configurations and Prometheus obviously need to store all the metrics somewhere. So this is a database where all the metrics that we are collecting are stored. And you can read about the basic data retention because this is something I asked myself. So how long is Prometheus actually uh, retaining this data? And in the documentation of Prometheus, you can see that the default retention time is set to 15 days. So anything that is beyond 15 days will be removed automatically. And usually there is not much usage for going back any further. So for example, if you're um, monitoring a server and you have some kind of a problem, you probably don't need to go back like 30 or 40 days. It's mostly important to know or compare the metrics uh, how it was an hour ago or maybe one or two days ago. There are very few reasons why you would want to archive those metrics and go beyond that 15 days retention. But in case you do, you can actually actually use this uh, command or this parameter here to extend the retention time. So back to our Docker Compose file here. So we are just defining those two volumes to store the data persistently. And now we start with the first container that is called Prometheus. And we are using the latest Prometheus version from the official repository and set the container name to Prometheus. We are also exposing the port 1990, which is the default port. This is not encrypted at all. So this is something you need to take in consideration. Don't expose it to the public internet because it has no authentication and no encryption on that part. So this is something you probably only want to do in a in a very uh, protected local network or even just in an isolated Docker network and don't want to expose this somewhere else, right? Or you might also consider protecting this uh, with access control servers or access proxies like Teleport or use reverse proxies like the Nginx proxy manager or traffic. So this is also something I cover in other videos of my channel. So if you want to know how to securely expose any web applications, take a look at the stuff on my YouTube channel. So now we need two volumes here for Prometheus because we also need to create a configuration file where we configure which targets a Prometheus should try to establish a connection to and collect the metrics from. And these targets are configured in the Prometheus.yaml file. We simply put in the etc Prometheus directory on our host operating system. And we will mount that into the config directory inside the container and use this as a target. 
We also want to use the Prometheus data to store any data persistently. As I said, this is a database where all the metrics are stored and collected. Now we also want to create a second container for the web UI, the Grafana, where we are visualizing this data. So we want to use the image from Grafana, the latest version, set the container name and expose the port 3000. So this port is also unencrypted, but it has a login mechanism. So you also may want to protect this with SSL certs and a reverse proxy. And we want to store all the configuration and the dashboard inside the Grafana data volume here. Okay, so this is fine. We can simply just deploy this uh, stack now and let's try to do that. But it probably won't work yet because we haven't created this configuration file for Prometheus. I just want to show you what will happen if you deploy it without that configuration file. If we go inside the logs of Prometheus here, you can see that it failed to open the Prometheus.yaml. So we need to first of all need to create this configuration file that Prometheus can operate. And in the getting started guide of Prometheus, you will see a template here or you simply can just go to my GitHub repo repository and go back to the boilerplate section. I already created a template Prometheus YAML configuration file that also includes some exporters that I'm using in my test setup here. So let's go to the terminal of our home server and first of all create the directory inside the at etc folder that's called Prometheus. And of course I also need to do that with root users privileges. I always forget this stuff. <laughs> and then I also want to create a new configuration file inside this folder here. That is called Prometheus.yaml. So let's open this in Wim and basically just paste the content of my template in here and just leave it like this here. I will walk you quickly through that. It's not too complicated here. So first we can define some global variables like the scrap interval. So every 15 seconds, this is a default time where Prometheus tries to establish a connection to all the different targets we are configuring in the scrape configs here. So we want to add one job first and configure the target localhost on 1990, which is the Prometheus interface itself. So it's it also can scrape its own metrics here and use this as an example to show you at least something, right? So let's write and exit this file. And we also need to go back to Portainer and restart the container. So let's go here to containers and restart Prometheus. So now inside the logs, you should see that everything is fine. We now should be able to open this uh, web UI. So we just enter the IP and the port and you should be able to reach the Prometheus interface. And you can see there's no login, there's no encryption anywhere. So make sure that you're protecting this securely. And first of all, we can also get some information about the server health status. So the TSDB status is the database. And you can see that it's already uh, pulling some metrics here. We can also see all the targets that are configured and if they are up and healthy. So if you configure multiple jobs inside this configuration file here, for example, we will do that later here. We will also see them inside the targets here and see if they are up and if Prometheus can connect to them. But I want to show you how to query some metrics inside Prometheus because in the main page of Prometheus, we can also put in an expression if you're familiar with the PromQL language, which uh, I am not to be honest. So I, I'm just a beginner with this stuff. But if you click on that icon here, you can see all the different metrics that Prometheus has stored inside the database. And you can see there's already a lot of stuff in here which looks really intimidating, right? Because if you don't know what all these metrics are, you never find the stuff that you're looking for. But don't worry about this. I will show you how to visualize all this data with Grafana because this is what Prometheus isn't actually supposed to do. It's not supposed to, to get the metrics. It's just storing and collecting them. Okay, so these are some basic example metrics, but now we, you probably want to scrape any metrics for a Linux server, or maybe you want to scrape your data of a Docker stack or something like this here. So this is how it works in Prometheus, because Prometheus has a bunch of different exporters and integrations. And if you go to the official homepage to exporters and integration, you can see there are a lot of third party exporters even mentioned on their homepage. And you can see there are so many different exporters for databases. For example, if you want to collect some metrics for your MySQL database, you can just use the MySQL server exporter. There are also some hardware stuff here. So you can see that for FortiGate firewalls, there is actually an exporter, which is pretty cool. 
you can scroll through this stuff, what you can monitor with this system. It's very versatile, it's very flexible, and you could even just write your own exporter if you have a custom system that you've developed and you want to monitor. And I want to show you two main exporters that I'm using in my home lab to uh, scrape some interesting metrics. For example, some of my virtual servers that I'm running with a Linux operating system and of course my Docker stack. So the first exporter I want to show you is called the node exporter, the node system metrics exporter, one of the official systems that can scrape metrics from servers. They are not recommending it to deploy as a Docker container, but it's actually the first uh, part what they are telling you to do. So I don't know why they are not recommending it. It will definitely work. The main problem here is that those kind of exporters uh, which want to connect some of the resource metrics like CPU, memory and those kind of things always require privileges to access their specific files inside um, the Linux uh, virtual file system. And that requires you to um, mount the root directory inside the Docker container, which probably uh, some people are afraid of, but you can see that you can also set this to read only so that the container itself couldn't change any information. It's just about reading this stuff because otherwise it just couldn't collect the metrics from the host OS, right? So this is something we need to do. You can simply use this as a Docker Compose example, or you will again find this in my boilerplates. So you will find a folder for exporters here where I add uh, some templates here. And I probably will add more of this stuff as I'm monitoring more systems in my home lab, I will expand this. So in the node exporter, you can see a Docker Compose template here and we simply can just copy this content here and modify our stack or you could just create a different stack for that. But I'm putting this into the same stack for the simple reason that we have one isolated Docker network and I don't need to expose the ports of the exporter somewhere because this could be dangerous, right? The simplest way is to just deploy it in the same Docker stack here. So just paste the information here. And usually you don't need to change anything in here. I also want to know, scrape the metrics of my Docker containers. This is something that node exporter doesn't do. So we need a different exporter to do that. So let's go back to Prometheus exporters and let's search for Docker. You will find a Docker daemon exporter here, but I'm using a different project that is called Catvisor. So Catvisor is maintained by Google and you can see that it provides a container user to understand resources of usage and performance of containers. So it scrapes things like processes, exports, memory, CPU usage, and those kind of things. So if you want to see metrics for your individual containers, this is a really nice exporter to use. And you can find a Docker command to quickly run that. Or again, go to my boilerplates and just use the Docker Compose template for that. So I want to copy this as well. And I've modified the basic version a little bit so you might just check it out and see if it works for you and just add this to your stack configuration file as well. So now we want to update the stack and deploy everything here and you can see that it's now updating the stack and has started two additional containers to scrape the metrics of our Docker containers and of the physical or virtual server Anyway, the host operating system, right? So no, of course, we have deployed those two tools that will now scrap and collect the metrics, but we also need to get these metrics inside Prometheus. And of course, we need to configure the configuration file and add some jobs for it. So the first job is an example job for the node exporter. And I just wanna uncomment these lines here and configure it a little bit. So you can see I'm also using the DNS names here. And this is only possible if you have deployed all the containers in the same Docker Compose stack, right? Because only then they are located in the same local isolated network of Docker and they can find each other by DNS name. Otherwise you probably need to put in their IP addresses. The second job is for Catvisor and you can see that it's not really so complicated. You basically can just repeat the same uh, pattern here and you don't need to configure anything else because Prometheus has a standardized interface or standardized language to pull those metrics and all exporters that are written will use the same standardized way of um, making these metrics available to Prometheus. So you don't need to configure anything else here, what type it is. Um, Prometheus doesn't really care which application it is. So let's write and exit this file and restart our Prometheus container here. And now I want to go back to the Prometheus web interface here. 
it will reload the page so that probably will now take some time but let's go to the targets here and after reload you can see it's already up i didn't change anything here so sometimes you need to wait a few seconds uh, once you redeploy the container but now if we go to the main page of prometheus and go through the different metrics you can see a bunch of different stuff that is added here for example the container underscore metric is from catvisor and we also have the node underscore for the node exporter here so let's try to visualize this data in a useful way so we can understand what is happening here and we are using Grafana to do that. We already deployed Grafana in Portainer so we can simply just open the web interface on port 3000. And this is a login of Grafana. As you can see, it's not encrypted, but it has a login. So you probably want to expose or do access control. I, I already talked about this. So let's use the default username and password, which is admin admin. Now we just need to simply follow the instructions here in the web UI. And first of all, add our data source. So now we can select which data we want to use to visualize. Because you can see Grafana can be used for a variety of different monitoring and storage systems here. So not just Prometheus, but also so InfluxDB, Elasticsearch, uh, MySQL, a lot of other things that can be integrated with this system. It's, it's very flexible and versatile, such as Prometheus is, so it's really, really cool. Of course, we want to select Prometheus here. And now we need to tell Grafana where to look for the Prometheus server. So now we can simply just go here, use the IP address, or simply refer to it by name, because it should also work. So enter HTTP Prometheus or your IP address on port 1990. And let's test if we can reach it. And you can see the data source is now working, everything is up and running, and Grafana is now able to visualize data from the server. Uh, so no, you can create your first dashboard and start with Grafana, and you can see it's not presenting you anything. As I said, it's very flexible, it's highly customizable, and it's meant to uh, be customized and created by you. So you can start with an empty panel here, and basically start scraping some data and build your own dashboard here. So in the right uh, panel, you can select which type of metric you want to visualize, if it is a time-based series, a bar chart, or a simple statistic, or a table, anything like this. So there's a lot of stuff in here. You can customize a whole dashboard with that. Let's let's try a time series here. And in the metrics browser, we now can select which metric we want to collect. And now you can see that is all this stuff that we have seen in Prometheus, right? So for example, I, I remember something that we probably want to visualize, something like memory. So we're using the container memory RSS and use this as a query here. So you can see it now starts to visualize something, but it doesn't really make any sense at all. So as I said, the query language is something that you would need to learn if you want to do that manually but don't worry i will show you a very easy way you can also customize some of the graph styles here this is very very cool you can do a lot of stuff with that it's really nice but of course you don't want to build all this stuff yourself because then you probably will spend a few months <laughs> Grafana also has a library where people share their own dashboards um, because every dashboard needs to be customized for those specific exporters, right? So when you go to the Grafana homepage here and go to dashboards, you can basically search through a library to get the metrics or to visualize the metrics in a way you want to see. And you basically just need to search for an exporter here, for example, node exporter, and then you will find a bunch of different dashboards. You can just use them and try them all out. One thing that I've used and I find very useful is the node exporter full. So every dashboard has a unique identifier. So this is a dashboard I want to see here, for example. Let's click on that. And it has a lot of great positive reviews, which, which is pretty nice here. And you can just copy this dashboard ID here. And now we want to import a new dashboard here. So click on import and paste in the identifier of the dashboard UI you have found in the Grafana library here. Load it. And then you can import it. You also need to select the Prometheus as a data source. And this is basically the metrics for the node exporter, the host operating system statistics, the CPU busy, system load stuff, memory used, swap file used, and a bunch of other different things like the CPU cores, the uptime, and some other useful information here. You can also see that there is much more stuff in the drop down menu here. If you want to get information about the network traffic here, for example, there many different metrics or you can uh, monitor or troubleshoot some of the errors you will see on your network card interface for example the network traffic errors that would raise if you got some network issues here or you can uh, see some metrics about the storage disk the input output operations and those kind of things so it's 
really, really nice. And of course, there's also a nice dashboard for cat visors to see some uh, container metrics here. So let's go back to the Grafana dashboard and let's search for cat visor. I think this one is what I've tried out, which was working pretty well. So let's just copy this ID here. And now you can see this is a basic dashboard for the cat visor exporter where you can see all the container statistics such as CPU and memory utilization usage. And this is a really, really cool thing. You can customize all this stuff as well. So you can go in here, edit this and just modify the queries and do a lot of stuff here to, to fully customize the dashboard to all of your needs. Okay, so I hope this was interesting and you are now monitoring your servers with Prometheus and Grafana. Of course, we have just scratched the surface here. There's much more to learn about server monitoring like a centralized log management, the Prometheus alert manager or other data sources in Grafana. So there are so many topics I could all do separate videos about. And if you want to watch some more interesting stuff, I've put you a suggestion for a fantastic video you should watch next in the description below. So thanks everybody for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye bye.